have entitled, or we have entitled the message today, Called to Serve. Called to Serve. Oh, I like that, uh, that aspect of see. 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 And that's what you're going to look at, even some aspect of it. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, 15 to 23. Ephesians 1, 15, 23. It says, uh, verse 15 says, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The amplified classic version. Are you able to get in there? Let me see if I can get my... It says something there, even which goes to... Um, which speaks of... Uh, like what you're talking about seeing. It says, For I always pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And look at this. Of what? Insight. That takes what? Spiritual eyes. Of insight into mysteries and secrets. When I see that, insight into mysteries and secrets, because I think of the confession that I've made over the years, I just think of... Uh, um, Matthew 13, 11. And to me it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So actually the access to mysteries, the access to the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God is being granted to you and I. Because it's available to everyone does not mean that everyone can take it uh, uh, or has it, I mean. It's available to everyone, but does not mean that everyone has it. How do we receive what he has made available again by faith? Through the power of the word of God and the spirit of God indwelling us, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, and he says this, of insight into mysteries and secrets, in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. That's what I want. That should be our desire. We want deep and intimate knowledge of God. Not about him, not of him, but the revelation, deep and intimate knowledge of him. We know him. Go, go to, to, to uh, John 17, 3, please, the same version. John 17, 3. I want you to see something there of the same version. It says, and this is eternal life. It means to know, and look at this, to perceive, to recognize, become acquainted with and understand. Is to know, is, it, it means to know, this is what eternal life is. Have we received eternal life? We received Jesus Christ, we have received eternal life. This is how it means how to, to know, is to perceive, is to recognize, Become acquainted with and understand you, the only true and real God, and likewise to know him, Jesus, as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. God wants us to, to know him. Perceive. Recognize. Become acquainted with him. He made his ways known to Moses, but his works to the children of, of, of Israel. What does God want us to, to, to do is to know his ways. His ways of doing and being right. Amen. If you know you knew exactly what to do to, to have to turn around that business, how wonderful that be. Or not to turn it around to have it as a billion shillings business. You'll just be that way the way you are with your mask looking down and saying, or you'll have an excitement of, I know it. I know it. I know it. I had a, I had a trainer, uh, Brother Richard Shisium. And um, we're talking about different things. Now, this is his area of training. So I say, man, I, I think I need to 
do such and such. He says, you know what? Um, he said, let me, let me put it clearly. I said, I think I need to cut my weight down a little bit. He says, no, 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 you need to put on more muscles. And then he says this. He told me this. For me, I know even if he's come to a place, he knows even if uh, he puts on weight, he knows what to do with it. He has the know-how. You all kept quiet. Know-how of changing the fat to muscles. So, so that, that means, so, so he says this, I'm not, you know, if I'm invited to eat, I will indulge. Because I know what I'll do after that. But someone there indulge, they have really indulged. <laughs> I won't go there, but God wants us to perceive, to recognize, to know him, to know his ways. Now, and let's go back to our scripture, their reference. So, so he says this, the eyes of your understanding, which is actually the New King James says, also the eyes of understanding or the eyes of uh, our hearts. Being enlightened that we may, that we may, that we may know, look at this, that we may know what is the hope of his calling. And that's what you're going to do today. We're going to start right there. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. The hope of his calling. But let me say this, go further. He says this, and what are the riches of his inheritance? His inheritance. And he says, and what is exceeding greatness of his power? So look at this. He's talking about his call. His exceed, his call. Where am I? His call and, the, and uh, his inheritance in the sense, and he's talking about his exceeding greatness of his power. So it's all of it is his, 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 his. All what we need to do is to answer to his. His call, I'll be speaking, I started this past Wednesday speaking some things regarding that. His call, look at this, because it is his call, it is his responsibility for provision. And because it is his, pro is, I mean, he, he does provide, and then it is his responsibility to provide for the power to accomplish that call. When he gives you a vision, it's now his responsibility to, you, it's your responsibility to believe him according to his word, to manifest that, but he's made available provision, he's made available the ability and the power and the authority needed to fulfill that call. So what is very important is to know that call. That's what you're going to look at this morning. Called to serve. Let's look at that word hope. Hope of his calling. Let's look at that word hope. How the Strong's Dictionary says um, concerning that hope, not in the sense of an optimistic outlook or wishful thinking without any foundation. It's not optimistic outlook or wishful thinking without any, any, any foundation, but the sense of, this is biblical hope, is a sense of confident expectation based on solid certainty. Confident expectation based on solid certainty. Is that too much? Is that too much or comprehensible? You can pray in the Holy Ghost. Anna. It's a confident expectation based on solid certainty. It's not wishful. It's not a, a sense of optimistic outlook or wishful thinking without any foundation. The biblical hope is a, there's that confident expectation. Why is that so? It's based on the word of God. Biblical hope rests on God's promises. Biblical hope is, is based on God's promises. I like calling this man God's unchangeable promises. You can, you can just stay right there. Stay right there and expect results. Particularly those pertaining, pertaining to Christ's return. That's the hope of our calling. Particularly those pertaining to Christ's return. There's one day, so real and so sure, he's coming back. 
I had, a, I had a certain encounter recently. I'll say a part of it, a portion of it. But I was walking on a certain path. I think it was the 5th, 5th of, uh, of June. I was walking on a certain path uh, with several other people. Then all of a sudden, I saw men. I didn't see any woman uh, at that point. And so I'll say I didn't see any woman in that, in that choir. It was like a choir. It was a group, not like a choir. But it was a group of men. Oh, Lord. Probably 30 men. And they were singing an old gospel song that I don't remember. Oh, it was beautiful. Beautiful singing. And then I looked at them, and they were a bit raised, you know, raised. Not, I, didn't, I didn't see them stepping on anything, but I, I, and I could tell they were suspended or not, but they were raised. So I, I was looking at them higher from, from my perspective, from the ground. I was looking up at them in this man. And then I say this. I say, let me see if I can say exactly what I said in that, because I typed it. I say, yeah. My point is, he's coming soon. That's my point. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. Uh, okay, let's see over here. And then, Lord, do I need to share this? Because <laughs> I can. It's lengthy. All right. If I don't find it, I'll say Joey. I say. Okay. Then, uh, yes. Then, uh, immediately after I saw many men, I don't remember seeing a woman of different. Has nothing to do with ladies. You understand that? Uh, gender sensitivity or whatever they call it. Uh, of different ethnicities singing an old glorious gospel song. Oh, it was glorious. Then I realized these people are not earthly. Some of them had lived on earth but had since died. I said, look, these people are long gone, meaning they were once on earth but have since left the earth. Jesus is coming. Oh, wow. And then I was awake but not awake. And I was awake and not awake. Only that I can say. You remember what Paul says, I was in the spirit whether in the body or out of the body. I was awake and not awake. And then I partially woke up and saw like people had just left a dusty earth and disappeared. I could tell they had gone to heaven, many people. But the word was, Jesus is coming. That's the hope of our redemption. That's the hope of our calling. There's a day that is coming that is going to happen and that will be a real. Because it hasn't happened does not mean that it's not going to happen. You see? So, so look at this then. <clears throat> so certain is the future of the redeemed that the New Testament sometimes speaks of future events in the past tense. It is so certain, uh, uh, it, it, so certain is the future of the redeemed that New Testament sometimes speaks of future events in the past tense as though they already Accomplish. Hope is never inferior to faith. But it's an extension of faith. Faith is the present possession of grace. Hope is confidence in grace's future accomplishment. That biblical hope actually will keep you strong and you keep living and becoming stronger and stronger. So the Amplified Version talking about that word hope, uh, the Amplified Version says this, calls it divine guarantee. Hope is divine guarantee. The confident expectation. I remember years ago I was looking for uh, uh, something and, and we needed to hire. And it was personal. And then I called this individual and I said, you know, do, do, are you aware of any company that hires out such and such a thing? And, and he's he say, is this for you? I say, yes, it's for me. And they say, no, I don't know of that company, but do this. Look for that company. When you find that company, just be, uh, be assured of this. I am going to pay for whatever the cost it will be. Oh, man, I got thrilled. I remember driving. I'm driving. I'm so thrilled because I was believing God for those finances. And here comes someone says, I'm going to take care of that whole situation. 
And look at this. And the Lord whispered just inside of me and said, do you know that's a man who can actually change his mind and, or even be dead tomorrow? I said, I'm aware of that, Lord. That's why I trust you. I said, you need them to take my word, even believe my word, than even the word of that man who, had given you the, who has given you the promise because my word will never change. Anyway, the, the, the man fulfilled, he did exactly that. And it was such a relief for Tina and I. So, here I came. You like it when you think a thought and someone else takes care of that thought? Impressed by the Holy Ghost? Huh? Even if it's your husband. Huh? You keep thinking. And the husband says, That's, uh, go ahead, keep thinking, my dear one. You'll never exhaust this. You are not convinced concerning that. But. So that's the hope. It's, it's a biblical hope rests on God's promises. So it says the hope of his calling. But let's look at that word calling. Um, look at Galatians 1.6. He says, Galatians 1.6. <clears throat> Apostle Paul writing to the church. He says this, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. And he continues, not that there's another gospel. But he says this, you are turning away from him who called you in the grace of Christ. So look at this. Every one of us have been called. Are you born again? You have been called. You have been called by God. That means you have something to fulfill for the kingdom of God. So you have a call of God in your life. You may not have been called to stand here and preach, or you may not be called as an evangelist out there, but you have a call of God. It's your responsibility to find it. An amazing thing is this is not like God is hiding it from his made available. And I'll show you some things that you can be able to, to discover, actually, of what you're called to to do, or else you'll end up working for money. And all your life, you know any natural person can do this. They are born, uh, you remember Makonde? Uh, he was born on a Monday. <laughs> Circumcised on a Tuesday, whatever it is. <laughs> but you remember the story of Simon Makonde? That's, that's actually, if, if I was to think about it now, the story of Simon Makonde, do they have a, they, let me see the young ones. Uh, Terry, do, you, do they know anything about Simon Makonde? No? Oh, okay, okay, there's little ones, I don't know if they know. Uh, they know about anything about Simon Makonde. I don't think they ever teach you anything like that anymore. And it's a good story, you need to look for it. <laughs> if Google has it, take it, see it. <laughs> But well, that story of Simon McCone, if you think about it then, that he was born on Monday, I don't know what, baptized on Tuesday or circumcised, so Wednesday he waited, and Thursday I don't know what happened, and then Sunday he died, or Sunday was buried. Uh, if you think about it actually, of that story, it's talking about a natural existence without purpose. Just think about this from the perspective of being in the kingdom of God. It's a natural existence without any purpose. Born on Monday, dying Sunday. Buried on Sunday. But if you start thinking about the call of God in your life, it's you are born with a purpose. You've been brought into the kingdom of, of God with a purpose. Because any natural man can, you know, you, like, let's, let's talk of a typical Kenyan life right now. Is your, you're born and, uh, you know, they wait and uh, before you're born, there's a, what do you call, baby shower or something. And uh, they get to meet and then, uh, and then uh, you know, raise up and then you have baby dedication. No, 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 baby dedication is not out there. This is the kingdom. But out there and maybe after some point, you, you know, you go to school, play group and on and on and come to standard eight or at least that time. I, I'm still not able to understand completely this new thing that came in. I keep asking children, so you're in standard? And then Tina says, grade, I say. And then so, so I, I asked someone, after it was a little one, I asked, you're in standard two or standard one? I say, 
Tina said, grade. I said, okay, we are, which grade? And then the, the child told, told me. And then I uh, will find a big, an older one, was I think should be like, in my thinking, class seven. So I'm asking, you are a grade? And Tina says, no, you don't say that one. That was. I'll stay with my Bible. <laughs> I'll keep changing. So if it's this little ones, you don't want me, want, don't want me to say standard. These other ones, what do you want me to say? I don't know. So I'll stay right there. So, so think about this. You finish primary school, you go to the high school, and you, know, you finish high school, and you do this. And it, it keeps every natural Kenyan person can live that way. But you are not called into that natural life, you're being called into the supernatural by God. Game changer is this, finding out what you're called to do. That's a game changer right there. Finding out what you're called to do. That changes everything. That changes everything because you have now come into the purpose. Look at this. Your provisions is through that purpose. And God becomes now the one bringing that provision. If he told you exactly what to do in a business and to finance the kingdom of God, that's exactly what he's going to do. He will show you what to do in that business. And I'm going ahead of myself. I'm excited already. People are finding their purposes. They're finding their calls this morning. Hallelujah. So the, the word call, so he says, I marvel that you are turning away soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ uh, to a different gospel. Called is, a, is a, the word is used to invite, invite or summon, S-U-M-M-O-N, or to summon. And it's, it's, it's a special use of God's call to participate in the blessings of the kingdom. Look at this, he's calling into something. Remember, he says this, for you, we are called, let's go to First Peter chapter 3. Can I say it again and then, then we go to First Peter chapter 3. The word is used to invite or to summon and is a special use of God's call to participate in the blessings of the kingdom. Just that statement, let's go to First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. Uh, it says, uh, verse 8, let's start from verse 8. Final, all of you, be of one mind, having compassion for one another, lovers, brothers, be tender hearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you are, come on, say it, you are called to this. To what? That you may do what? Inherit a blessing. You are called to this. That you may inherit a blessing. This is my call. So look at this. Following God's call is walking in the blessings of God. And, and, and if you, you start, you keep believing God for that spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. It's not a one-time thing. Listen, it's living a spirit-filled life into God's purposes and plans for your life. Living a spirit-filled life. Because the operation of the spirit, remember, remember the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, all of it, the source is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. So then to be able to realize this and walk in that which God has in store for you as the spirit of wisdom and revelation, then we need to live a spirit-filled life. Then we are able to hear, we are able to perceive, we are able to see his plans for our lives and fulfill it. His calling. Called to serve. We are called to inherit a blessing. You want a blessed life? God's call. <laughs> God's call. God's call. It's a blessed, blessed life. Romans 8, 29 to 30. Romans 8, 29 to 30. 
For he who for new, I may, you know, throw some thoughts here and there, and then probably go back into it in some, some weeks. I don't know how long we are going to take in dealing with this. But for whom he for he for new, for whom he for whom he for new. Did I say it right? For whom he for new. Okay. For whom he for new. Okay. <laughs> Okay, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Look at verse 30. Moreover, whom he predestined, this he also what? Called. And whom he called, this he also justified. And whom he justified, this he also Glorified. Now look at this about what Paul is saying here. He looks to eternity, uh, eternity past, and sees the purpose of his people. He looks, Paul looks to eternity past and sees the, that God's purpose for his people has only been good. He foreknew. He foreknew. Look at this. Think about this, church. Let me, let me, let me start up your whole emotions. Huh? We need to study. We need to find out the will of God for our lives. You know, not just, you know, shallow. We, we, can, we can sing songs and just tutaru karuka kamanda ma. And, and I need just, just. <laughs> and that's it. That's all we know to tutaruka kamanda ma. Say, not me. I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Now think about this. Think about eternity. What you think about eternity is this. Without, without, no be, with, without beginning and with no, with no end. Is that so? That's eternity. There's no beginning, there's no end. That's eternity. So look at this. Paul here is saying this. He'll, he'll, Paul looks to eternity past. Though, if we talk of eternity past, you're talking of time. There's no past, there's no present, it's eternity. Now that takes, by faith, accepting that. Because we are time bound in our thinking. And if you're not careful that actually, instead of helping you to receive the promises of God, it actually can, can limit your belief system. Because you think like, because I'm 50, then that's it. This is not going to happen. Who told you that? Huh? Because I have retired, then that's it. This is not going to happen. Who told you that? Because I'm 45, that's it. Who told you that? You see, that's time. That, that's limited. But that's not God's plan. For you to be limited by time. Listen, you have received eternal life. Eternal life has no beginning, no end. It's eternal. <laughs> it's without an end. So you have received that. Listen, this. Then you can be in faith even for restoration of things that have been stolen from you by the devil because it's just a matter of time you can come into the realm of the spirit and take that by faith and manifest it now through faith. Let me see if I'll start you a little bit. A little bit more. When did salvation happen? Actually, when was Jesus hung on the tree? Huh? Last week? No, we know it's about 2,000 years ago. When did you receive him as your Lord and Savior? You know the date. Okay? Was it 2,000 years ago? You are not there. But look at this then. That which he has made available is not limited to time. So this is what it means, something that happened about 2,000 years ago, you are able to appropriate it and see the results of it now. What about the opportunity that you lost at 1978? You are able, by faith, to get into that redeeming power of God and take it back by faith and enjoy it now. Hmm. I hope you see that. I hope you see that. 
Then when you start realizing that then you'll never be without hope. Never, ever, ever be without hope. Why? You can, you can, you can listen to the Lord and show you exactly what to do. I, I can share with you some things personally that I've experienced in the last few months. And probably, probably some of you will think like pastor has lost his mind. And I'll agree with you because I lost my natural thinking. I'm gaining more of my supernatural thinking, the mind of Christ. If I shared with you some things, I, I remember years ago, uh, I, I did this to, to, a, to a cousin of mine. I just been gi- I'd given my life to Christ and the Lord started speaking to me I'll, and I'll share with her and I'll share with her because I started sharing with her, I knew she was an intercessor. By the way, when I gave my life to Christ, I didn't know what intercessor was. I, that's how green I was. I just didn't care. Intercessor? I don't know. But I got to realize she was an intercessor. So I, uh, she told me and I knew that she's a prayerful woman that she knows the, the things that she knows or she's supposed to. So I started sharing with her some things that are, the Lord will speak to me and so many and I'll tell and I'll give her details. And years later, I remember it was I think 2002 um, and that, remember, I started sharing with her in 1996. In 2002, she told me, I think she told me in 2001, she told me, Davis, can I tell you something, please? I said, what is it? Do you know all this time you'll share to me things that you'll share with me? I thought you had lost your mind. <laughs> wow. I mean, I felt like just tears into my eyes. I'm thinking... All this time you thought I lost my mind? Supposedly intercessor. And she started seeing the things that I'd been telling her, details. And all this time she's looking, you know, I'm going, I'm sitting with her, I'm visiting, I'm telling her things like, nuts, 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 mother product, you know, kind of. Mother hospital product. And I'm, I'm serious. Because, listen, for, for a natural man does not perceive the things of the spirit because they are spiritually disarmed. So if you want that FM station up, your antenna up, and you start partaking the word of God and believing God for him to show you uh, the things that he wants you to know. So then, uh, I'll say it again. So Paul looks to eternity past and sees that God's purposes to his people has only been good. He foreknew and predestined believers to be like Christ. Look at this. Then he looks to the recent past and sees that God called and justified his people. When Christ was crucified, you you see that. And everyone who accepted that Jesus Christ and, and pursuing the will of God. And finally, Paul looks to the distant future and finds that God's plan is to glorify, that is to give a resurrection body to all who have been justified. That means we shall all be glorified. Glorified is talking about a future thing coming. In a twinkle of an eye, our bodies shall be changed. So you see, let, let me read it again in verse 30. Moreover, uh, verse 29, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, and that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, whom he, he, these he also called, and whom, whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. He's talking about that realm of eternity. Past, present, future. That is the hope of our calling. Guaranteed to happen and to be fulfilled. In Romans 8, 18, it says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time. Oh, I like that. I consider, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So what does it mean? You walk by faith, 
you have your faith activated concerning the promises of God that no matter what you go through, I'm not talking about sickness, diseases, diseases, but diseases and all that and all misfortunes, we are called to inherit a blessing. But I'm talking about this resisting the will of the enemy by renewing our minds that we may be in the purposes of God to fulfill the call of God for our lives or in our lives. If you don't, if you and I uh, do not actively, consciously, and with a purpose, renew our minds, then we are living a defeated life. Because we cannot win, walk victoriously in the life, in, in, in the life that God has called us without taking every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That does not ever work. I got an illustration. I think it's a book. No, that is not. Yeah, I think the book uh, by Charles Spurgeon. I read it in 1996 called Saturn the Defeated Fall. Powerful. Because you remember I'm new. I've come into the kingdom of God. I didn't know what, what, to, what will happen and all that. I've just been born again. Praise God. But started talking about the battle of the mind. The battlefield of the mind. And, and saying like, and then. I read another one, still this, the same time, of uh, two people, two ladies staying in the same house. That really helped me also to see that. And, and I was showing, you know, the way like, uh, do you all remember, how do I say this? Um, you know, like he's showing a picture, but he's showing also, drawing a picture, but showing thoughts. And in the spirit realm, showing demons that one is not seeing. Okay? We see that. So look at this. So, the first time, you know, they're excited. They start living in the same house. Praise God, they're sharing the house and all that. Then the following day, woke up in the morning, and it was, let's say like, um, I'm giving an example, uh, J and S living in the same house. So J, J it was J's uh, night to wash the dishes, but J went to sleep, didn't wash the dishes that, that night. And then S wakes up in the morning, phew, phew, they are born again, praise God, and comes in the kitchen and says, she didn't wash the dishes last night. I wonder what she's thinking. Now, thoughts are coming into the mind. And then, I'll wash them. And washes, but still in that murmuring and, you know, just not feeling good. Washing the dishes. Then S wakes up in the morning. Is it J and S? Anyway. S wakes up late and she's excited. Good morning, J. Good morning. What is it? There are thoughts that are being entertained already. But she's not being sensitive. You know, you remember the generation of not being sensitive. Not being sensitive. She's supposed to wash the good morning. And, and then uh, S goes and says, what happened? She's even not thinking about dishes. And then gets another thought. It's like, she's changed. She's changing. I don't think if we are going to stay together. And goes to work moody because thinking that Jay was not kind to her in the morning. Comes in the evening and she's, you know, she's a bit cautious. And during the day because her door had been opened, so many other thoughts had come in. Even the way she left the dining table the other night. Revelations of the kingdom of darkness are coming in. And the more you leave them unattended or unaddressed, the bigger they become. And one evening, maybe after a few days or weeks, sit together say, and, and usually it's the attitude now. So, so they have been full of demonic thoughts. Both of them. Now, and then Jay comes. You need to tell me if we are going to stay together or not. And S says, that's exactly what you've been thinking. You've been acting out different nowadays. And then S goes, what are you telling me? And you don't. And all of a sudden, because they never took authority over their thoughts and started talking to each other and communicate, even if it was the will of God for them to stay together in that season, they're separate. 
That doesn't happen in your life at all, it seems like. Huh? Did I ever, let me give you a story. Did I ever give you a story? I did, I think some time ago. I, I left one morning, you know, just, I, 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 you know, gotten into the world and it was all wonderful. And I went back to the dinners and closed the schools and all that. I went back to the kitchen. This was years ago. I went back to the kitchen. Usually she prepared something, uh, uh, something for me, knowing that I was leaving early. And I, I came back, it was about 6.30, I was about to leave, 6.15, 6.30. And she's deep asleep. And I checked. And I went to the, to the bedroom and, oh, honey, sorry. And she was deep asleep, frightful, so it's time of our holiday and all that. I said, oh, goodness, you're ready to leave? Yes. You know, th there's a bit of... <laughs> I said, Hannah, can, uh, please, please, let, uh, it was just the time to leave. I can prepare you, for you some fruits and others. No, honey, I'm fine, I'm going. I'm, I'm fine. Honey, please. I say, no, fine, honey, I'll see you. But there's, <clears throat> you know. And I left. And I remember where I was. Thoughts, I left and I said, I had this thought. You mean she just slept? She knew I was leaving early. And she didn't prepare anything for me. And here I'm leaving hungry. In the morning, I have a full day. I'm, I'm getting thoughts. I'm receiving thoughts. Demonic revelations. <laughs> it didn't take long. I say, wait a minute. I'm, I'm remember what I said. Wait a minute. Tina doesn't act that way. I know she loves me. I am not going to take that thought. Devil, shut up. I forgot about it until I think a few days later I was ministering and I remembered that. And I, I shared with the, I don't know if it was Wednesday prayer, or I think it was Wednesday prayer service. I shared with them. Why? I took authority over those demonic thoughts that actually saw seeds of separation. I could have come back in the evening or she comes and say, oh, sweet, I did have prepared this. I said, Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? Was everything okay in the office? Yeah. Hannah I've prepared, you know what you like? I like this a certain meal she prepares. I like osobuko. It's very nice. Go Google. <laughs> Go to images, Google, osobuko. I said, Hannah I've prepared osobuko for him. I think I'm okay. Honey, is everything okay? Yeah, it is and go back the following day, go home, go to, to work in the morning. Honey, I prepare some fruit. I, I, today I'm not even having any fruits. <laughs> and people be, suck like little, not all babies do that, little devilish babies. Why? They didn't take their thought captives to the obedience of Christ. Uh, I was wanted you to repent before we receive Holy Communion. You understand that? <laughs> Very good. Repent. While, while you can go, sweetheart, I know you forgot about it, but I'm fine. That's fine. You always do this for me anyway. So listen to this. In Romans 8, 18, it's not worth it compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us quickly. And then, therefore, this is the hope of his calling. It's certainty. It's certain. It's bound to happen. Look at this. Let me say it quickly. Uh, in the, the most popular phrase or words that you hear Moses speaking to, uh, to Pharaoh, the type, of, the type of redemption is this, or the type and shadow of redemption is this. Let my people go that... Come on. Let my people go that they may serve me. Don't forget that. Let my people, that was a type of redemption. Let my people go so that I may, they may serve me. In other words, I have called them out of this nation so that they can go somewhere in their freedom to serve me. Call from and call to. 
Don't forget that. Call from and call into. Or two. So call to serve in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It says this, but you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him. Look at this. Who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He called you out of darkness. He called you from the kingdom of darkness. And being called out of is that you may serve him into his marvelous light. He says this, that you may proclaim the praises of him. That our lives actually reflect his glory. How beautiful are the feet of those who carry the good news. You may not be the one proclaiming, pro proclaiming, but listen, listen, you have your part on a daily basis to do. And, and the, the big part there of, of a believer is to belong to a local church, to belong to a local assembly. They can serve in different aspects, but that's not it. You need to know exactly what does God call me to do? What is my part of this call? The call of the body of Christ. All of us in the body of Christ have been called. Whether one knows it or not. To develop that call in your life, it will take simply obeying God in the things that will impress you, your heart to do. Simple things. <laughs> if I had waited for one day to pastor a church and sit and say, you know, I'm just sitting here and say, you know, God told me I'll be pastoring here in this church. I could have been waiting. I could have been waiting. But what is it? Do something. You know, I get amazed of people who sees a need in the local church and tells the pastor, instructs the pastor to take care of that need. Pastor, I think you need, you need to be doing this. What are you doing? You know, you need to be aware of this. Maybe that's what you've called to do. Why don't you start doing it? I say, Pastor, I want to meet with you and uh, there's this area in the church. I think I can be able to do something about it. If you are, if as a pastor, you listen to what everyone tells you to do, they tell you to do. Send you to hospital, send you to the morgue, send you, you know, they, they can send you to places. And, and if you're not careful and don't be sensitive to the, and not like you don't attend to the, you know, to people, you understand that. I, um, I attend to people. I, and, and in the ministry, we do this. But if you're not careful, that people will actually tell you to do something that the Lord has been speaking to them to do. That's good. Praise God. <laughs> tell you to do something. As if you, if you are seeing something, maybe the parking, it might be you needing, need to be at the parking area. Oh no, I realize my child when she comes home, well, they needed to have been taught in this man. Probably the Lord is telling you, go to children church now. Now there's a way that they are ushering that, why don't you be part of the team? Then you, after you've, you stay there, you can start bringing in some thoughts. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Listen, there's no fulfillment in life without following exactly what the Lord has, has for you. There's no fulfillment. Fulfillment, oh boy. Fulfillment in life comes forth when you are doing what God has called you to do. I think myself happy. Apostle Paul says, do you know they are going to, they are going to whip you? Do you know they are going to stone you? In all these things, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Can you imagine of all those confessions that he makes even in the book of Philipp Philippians and in the book of Acts when, when he was being told not to go to Rome, he said, no, 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 don't try to do that. Let me, let me give you an example. You remember in, 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 uh, in Matthew 16, when Jesus said, who do men think that I am? And on and on and on. And then later on, he started talking about going to the cross and then Peter started rebuking him. You can't go to the cross. He said he was passionate of what he was going to do. That's why he called it the passion of the Christ. What did he say? Get behind me, Satan. It may look difficult. 
to the natural mind, but if that's God has, what God has called you to do, there will be a fulfillment inside of you. Now listen to this, that no amount of money, no amount of promotion can fill that gap. You, will know, you know, if you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you will know when you are out of place. You'll know it. You'll know it. And the fruit of it actually is visible. Because it's one, one frustration after another. But when you find your place, even if it looks like difficult for, for some people, you, you find that that's, that's what I enjoy doing. <laughs> what someone say, like, my goodness, uh, Pastoring is so hard. I say, no, it isn't. Who told you that? I, I hear people say that. Pastoring can be so difficult. You know, I've known of a pastor say, who told you that? I'm not living a difficult life. Is there any difficult around here? You seeing any? I'm not living a difficult life. Not at all. So it isn't. What about the challenges that comes with it? Who told you there'll be no challenges? Where, how, how does the promotion come? Kill Goliath. Promotion comes at a face. If that's what you have to face, face it in the name of Jesus. And that's what I'm going to show you later on. Because in that difficulties, it gives us the power, the authority, the ability to, to deal with that issue. He's a faithful God. So I can conclude. So every one of us has to develop that call. There are many ingredients required for the development of God's call. There has to be a continuous revelation of God's purpose for your life and for his body. There has to be a continuous revelation of God's purpose for your life and for his body. Listen, you don't operate independent from the body. No, I'm, I'm an evangelist. So where, where, where do you go to church? No, I'm evangelizing every time. Really? Then after every time you're evangelizing and all that, uh, brother, will you send me some money? This is my M-Pesa number. I've heard people saying that. This is my M-Pesa number, brother, send me something. I'll send you 10 bob. That's something. I all kept quiet. Send me something. Have you ever had? Is it so common in Kenya? Say, send to me a kid. You send a text written K I T U. <laughs> is that so? To me a kid. Then you send a text K I T U. Phew. Message, SMS, or WhatsApp. Kid. Do something with that. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, verse 1 and 6. <laughs> I've, I've, had, I've gone to my, you know, traveled to my home area. Then you meet someone says, <laughs> Then I, I, I've answered several times, <laughs> that's, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Say that. Me tlet anini. Say na ume to andali anini. Ah, you know you are from town. <laughs> Have you been to Nairobi? <laughs> anyway, let's go to uh, Ephesians for one quickly. Say this. I there for the prisoner. I want you to see some ingredients that will help you uh, in walking in the call of God and identifying it. Look at this. I, I therefore, the, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you are called. This is written to the church. This is what it means. Every member. And he says this. With all lowliness. That's very important right there. Lowliness. That's a spirit of lowliness and gentleness. And gentleness. With long suffering. Bearing with one another in love. Now, that's another part. You, you walk with all lowliness. It's a place of humility and gentleness. 
It will still remain that way with long suffering because you'll go through some things that will take patience. And look at this, bearing one with one another in love because we are members of the body of Christ. There are people that are not lovable. But we are called to love them. Have you ever met such people? But we are called to love because there is the bearing with one another. You know, I had it in the Bible school being said that, oh, I love ministry. I just love ministry. It's the people that I cannot stand. Ministry is people, and we are called to love. So they're, they're bearing with one another. And if you're, that is in, in the corporate, they think of team mentality. You still have to think of, I'm not alone in this. We have to work with each other. Look at this, like they say in the, in the, in the, in the natural world. We have to live out our differences and work with each other. Agree on this. That is wonderful right there. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Now, that's another thing of character formation. You're always wanting to promote unity in the body. Whatever it will take, unity. Unity. In the bond of peace. That if, if, look at this, if you want to fulfill that call of God in your life, you can be a carrier of strife. You can be a person who, who, who causes a division. There are people who won't understand how they are doing it, but are they called into the body? Yes, love them. Love them. Love them. I don't understand all what they are doing. You see, if I, I'm, I'm, having, I'm watching someone who I see a minister and I don't understand what they are saying, I don't understand what they are doing, and all they are saying, there are some things that I don't see them the way they, they are saying them, I don't have to sit down and watch them. I just turn off to another channel that I can pay attention to and understand them. Rather than start criticizing them, I don't have to. They are not my servants. They are God's servants. What about in the body of Christ? It doesn't matter. That's the same way. Listen, the way to live long, you have to endeavor to walk in love. That has to be our call of walking in love. And listen to this. There is one body and one spirit just as you are called in one hope of your calling. We started looking at several things. The definition I gave about hope one Lord, therefore if he's my Lord, then we serve him. He's one Lord, and then one faith, and God's word, one baptism, same Holy Ghost, <laughs> if I may say that way, one God, and Father of all, who's above all, and through all, and in you all. So look at this, the service has to come through that same mentality. And members of the body. You know, I tell people, if you're, you're having to go to a church and you complain about that pastor, complain the way the ushers do, complain, please leave. Go to another church. You are suffering. <laughs> it's the truth. You're suffering. You're criticizing everything they do. What are you doing there? Go. If you, you hear someone say, Go, leave, go out, go to another church. You are really suffering. Don't stay there. We don't want that pastor to make you suffer. The congregation, the ushers, from the gate, they're making you suffer. Even their YouTube channel, they're making you to suffer. Go, don't watch it. <laughs> don't suffer. <laughs> that's a gracious pastor, is that so? Isn't that, that's how it's supposed to be, really. You know, if I, was it men, are, I was telling men that in the men's meeting last Saturday, you have to be committed to the leader of that vision. And I was giving, uh, I was giving this, I say that it's a, it's, it's a joke, Deacon Duncan said this, but I say this, 
If I, if, if I wake up one day and I'm rebelling from Pastor Carla, don't follow me. Don't ask me, I'm a live wire, you'll burn. I don't believe what Pastor Carla is doing and all that. Don't follow me. You're in the wrong place. Your allegiance goes up. Oh, that went quiet. But I'm, com I'm a committed son to make those over me glad that I am their son. And listen, even one over me may, not, may say something I don't even understand what they are saying, but what do you want me to do? I'll do it. Why? I'm called to promote unity. So you'll never find me in that rebellion. I love the Lord. I love Pastor Carla. I will serve her to whatever. I don't know. I'm, I believe I'm called just to help her for the rest of my life. So that's what I'll do. Hmm. That's right, right there is a solution to someone, uh, the answers you've been looking for. Listen, rebellious will never pay. Well, let me say this. We'll pay, but not the fruits of God. We'll bring destruction, and it's not worth it. Let me read one scripture, and then uh, we will finish. Romans 12. <clears throat> So I, we, Pastor Carla says that, uh, uh, it says, <laughs> we make jokes, say, actually, she says sometimes, actually, uh, Pastor Davis, you, you resemble me. I say, yeah, especially the nose. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to say that? And they say, actually, you, re you resemble me, Davis. I say, yeah, especially the nose, just like yours. <laughs> Now look at this in, in verse, verse 4. I'm going just to read, okay? All right? I'm just going to read, and then we'll, we'll go into Holy Communion. Listen to this. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. Okay? So we being many are one body in Christ, individually members of one another. Having then gifts Deferring according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. So you see, members of the body have what? Gifts. You have. Different from one another. But look at this, then he says this. Um, if prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exalts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality. He who leads with the diligence, he who shows mercy with the cheerfulness. Those all are foundational gifts of members of the body of Christ. And let us love, uh, let love be without hypocrisy, and it goes on and on and on. So the people that they, there's, they, they are just, they do ministry, teach, exhort, Give the people just that is in their hearts. I've known people, they are just givers. I've known people in the, in, the, in the body of Christ, even in our local church, that they are just givers. They are always in their hearts, they are wanting to give. That's their ministry. What about other members of the body? They're supposed to give. But the people that they are anointed in that area of giving, that's what they do. The people just who are merciful. You know, they show mercy. It talks about with cheerfulness. The people that always know what is happening among the church members, is, they tend to know that we need to, to visit so-and-so. We need to visit so-and-so. The people just, they are sensitive towards that. We need to visit so-and-so. So-and-so is not feeling well. So-and-so is not feeling well. We need to. And, and if you are, that is your place. You, all of us are supposed to do it to some measure, but the people that are, that's their passion. The well-being of others. 
And if you are such a kind of a person, don't get frustrated if not all of people are doing that. Just do it. Do it as unto the Lord. There are people that you meet with them and you sit down a little bit and they want to teach you something that they are learning. That's their place. The people um, which is liberality, is, is, it, it can be it can be actually liberality, it can go into hospitality. The people are just hospitable. In a team, that's, they are always hospitable. They want to do something for others. I've known people that they want many times to host others in their homes. But there are some who never host anyone. <laughs> Where are we meeting in town? <laughs> the last time we met in town. Uh, even today, we can meet another place, you know, in another restaurant, but we're meeting, where actually is this function? Oh, I have tents that are set across. I thought we are going to the house, not, no? There are tents somewhere in a certain ground. Listen, the way to find out, actually, believe God, I like the way uh, Mr. Arim said, of that scripture in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, concerning uh, her shoulder, your, your shoulder. She says she started praying this, Lord, I, I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you concerning my shoulder. So it can be the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you concerning my marriage, concerning my business, concerning what you've called me to do. Because my satisfaction is in that. In doing what I've called to do. The frustrations, the uncertainty, the hopelessness is when you found your place. And listen, and every one of you has a place. Ask the Lord, ask the Lord, and start writing some things. And, and listen, tell him, Lord, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. Whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. <laughs> I had a Pastor Justin say, Justin Bridges, tell me we were in town. <clears throat> he said, you know, he started you know, preaching and he started preaching and all that. Then we were standing actually around the Hilton Hotel in a town here in Nairobi. Then he said, can you imagine one day in a certain city, I don't remember which state that was. The Lord told me to stand by the pavement and preach. As I say, he told me, the Lord said, stand over there by that pavement and preach. Tell people about, about me. He said, what? I can't do that. The Lord said, I want you to do it. He says, actually, he obeyed and did it. He preached, he preached, he preached, he preached. People are not listening. People are not paying attention. And no one came to say, like, I, I want to, to, to receive the Lord as you've preached. The, the, nothing happened. Then he said, Lord, nothing happened. He said, that was for you. I was delivering you from people. <laughs> it's a good one. That's for you. I'm delivering you from people. <laughs> Some of you need that. You know the major hindrance of doing the will of God? One of the major hindrances? People. People. Be delivered from people. People will always say something. Say something. Even if you tiptoe around. You not know, like monks. They may say you're not tiptoeing right. You're supposed to be tiptoeing this way. And I mean, people will always say something. <laughs> always do say something. But listen to this. You have to make a decision. I'm going to serve God. Not what people say. Not what others are saying but to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Did you receive anything out of that? Two minutes I read just this one scripture. First Corinthians 1 from the Passion Translation. Then we'll continue next week. From the Passion Translation, uh, it's, it's just self-explanatory. Is that English? Okay. Uh, look at verse 18. I'm going to just read it. Them out. 
To preach the message of the cross seems like sheer nonsense to those who are on their way to destruction. But to us who are being saved, it is the mighty power of God released within us. Praise God. For it is written, I will dismantle the wisdom of the wise and I will invalidate the intelligence, intelligence of the scholars. So where is the wise philosopher who understands? Where is the expert scholar who comprehends? And where is the skilled debater of our time who could win a debate with God? Hasn't God demonstrated that the wisdom of this world system is utter foolishness? For in his wisdom, God designed that all the world's wisdom would be insufficient to lead people to the discovery of himself. I like that. He took great delight in baffling the wisdom of the world by using the simplicity of the preaching, of preaching the story of the cross in order to save those who believe it. For the Jews constantly demand to see miraculous signs while those who are not Jews constantly cling to world's wisdom. But we preach the crucified Messiah. The Jews stumble over him and the rest of the world sees him as foolishness. But for those who have been chosen to follow him, both Jews and Greeks, he is God's mighty power, God's true wisdom and our Messiah. For the foolish things of God has proven to be wiser than human wisdom. And the feeble things of God have proven to be far more powerful than any human ability. Brothers and sisters, consider who you are when God called you to salvation. Do you? Consider who you are when, uh, when God called you to salvation. Not many of you are wise scholars by human standards. Even, if, even Dr. Chris, you after you receive Christ, that's when you got your doctorate. <laughs> You're not a wiser scholar on yours. You used to sing in choir, actually. You sing, were you what? In the university or were you already working? And I used to sing in choir. So when he was called, according to human standards, we are not men of... Uh, not men of you are wise scholars by human standards. No, are men of you in positions of power. That means it, it all came from God. Look at this. Um, not many of you are considered the elite when you answered God's call. But God chose those whom the world considers foolish to shame those who think they are wise. And God chose the puny and powerless to shame the high and mighty. He chose the lowly, the laughable, in the world's eyes, nobodies, so that he would shame the somebodies. For he chose what is regarded as insignificant in order to supersede what is regarded, regarded as prominent. So that there would be no place for prideful boasting in God's presence. For it is from, from man that we draw, for it is not from man that we draw out life, but God as we are being joined to Jesus, the anointed one. And now he's our God-given wisdom, our virtue, our wholeness, and our redemption. And this fulfills what is written. If anyone boasts, let him only boast in all that the Lord has done. That's humbling. Amen. If, if anyone, if anyone, anyone of you boast, let him only boast in all that the Lord has done. And we embrace it by faith and we pursue his will. And fulfill it in our generation. Will you please stand up on your feet? I, I, I pray you receive something that will stir you up. And, and pass. Especially if you've been having continuous uh, frustration um, in something that you know that you're supposed to be doing, but it's not turning out well, so easy. Go back to the Lord and say, God, tell me. Am I supposed to do this? Were you the one who called me to do this? <laughs> Amen. I had, I had Brother Kenneth Copeland say something years ago. He said that he had bought a certain plane and it was just falling. <laughs> you know, just, what do you call it? Just going, you can tell that it wasn't working, nothing was working concerning that plane. And he says that, that he, he told the Lord, Lord, I want you to help me about what to do about that plane. That is your plane. He said, no, that's not my plane. As Brother Copeland, that's not the Lord told me, that's not my plan. I told you not to buy that junk, but you disobeyed me. I said, Oh God, forgive me. Please help me. I said, I'll help you to fix it and sell it. 
There are things that are falling apart and we are holding them because first God never told us to do them. But keep holding them, holding on them, holding on them. That's why I really, 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 for the last 24 years, my 25th year, I endeavor first to know exactly what God wants me to do before I start doing it. Because when it's so difficult, I can turn to him and say, God, please, you told me this. Where am I missing it? Please help me. Where am I missing it? Instead of coming, going to a place and say, God, God, I don't know what to do. I said, but I told you not to do that. I never told you to do it. And you are halfway of that frustration. Listen, God has called you into peace. God has called you into his blessing. God has called you into everything that brings peace. The word says in, in Isaiah 32 verse 17, for the work of righteousness shall be quietness and peace forevermore. Are you lacking peace? Are you finding yourself so frustrated? That is not coming from the Lord. It can be disobedience. That is something God told you to do and you've not been doing it. And it's not the one causing frustration, but the enemy comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. But you can get back to him and say, God, I ask you to forgive me. 